Hey guys, uh, Marcus Crawford here with the Idaho Quadcopter Channel. Hey, I just finished a flight with the Hubson Zeno Mini Pro, my first flight with this guy. Took it out over the canyon and had a very successful flight with it. So I've got another fully charged battery, so I don't want to waste this scenery or a, a fully charged battery. So we're going to put this drone up in the air and this, is a, this would be a nice dramatic spot to try out some of the intelligent flight modes and we may even try out some uh, some tracking and I, um, this drone will do GPS tracking but I'm more interested in the uh, visual tracking that it will do uh, so let's quit messing around and let's get this bird in the air. Okie dokie, uh, so we're ready to take off again uh, I had to do two compass calibrations again that time it, the first one that says it was successful, then I immediately got another uh, compass error. You're seeing a gimbal error on there because I accidentally touched the gimbal, messed with it when I was uh, doing that calibration, so I'm quite sure that will go away. Uh, so let's go ahead and take another look at, and uh, make sure our return to home, yeah, 35 meters, that's plenty for where we're at here. And uh, check our status list. And it's, we're getting that gimbal error, but that's going to go away uh, as soon as we take off on the camera, I'm quite sure. So, because uh, like I said, again, that was because I touched the gimbal while I was doing the compass calibration. So let's go ahead and take off uh, on the app. And uh, sure you want to take off? Yes, we are. And the drone is moving around a little bit. Yeah, there's something going on with that gimbal. So I'm going to land again. Boy, we had a bunch of wind come up here. Okay, I'm going to cycle the drone here. I, what I think is uh, when I was messing around with it, I think the gimbal disabled itself. So we're entering device again, and let's see what happens. Yeah, so I'm gonna, it still has that gimbal error, so I'm gonna cycle, power cycle the drone. And we'll let it connect here, and we'll see how we do. I suspect that'll cure our problem. And it is asking for a calibration, so we'll do that. Yeah, so our compass error went away, everything went away here. Let's, uh, it says preparing to take off, ready to fly. Let's take a look at our device status list and scroll up, or down, excuse me, uh, and boy, everything looks good. Uh, aircraft is connected, everything shows normal there. System status, normal, so I like that Hubson includes that. Uh, that's a handy thing just to look at and quickly uh, do a checklist and see how your aircraft is doing. Okay, so let's take off again. And there, that gimbal looks a lot better, doesn't it? And boy, look at the wind blowing around this time. So I'm yawing the aircraft around, and it's, uh, it's kind of moving down a little bit. Let's bring it in. And up a little bit. And you guys can see it getting blown around in the wind, but, uh, but it's pretty steady. That's kind of cool to see. Okay, I'm going to drop that gimbal down. And we're going to do a droney, but we're going to do it uh, a little different direction here uh, because you guys just saw one that direction. So we're going to go right over, over the side of the canyon. So reverse and up now, reverse and up. Boy, is that a good look or what? Oh shoot, I wasn't recording. Good thing we got a screen recording going. Yeah, let's go back in and we're gonna start recording. Everything will be on automatic. We didn't change any settings. So now we're recording. Uh, so let's go ahead and continue to reverse out over the canyon so you guys can get a good look. And I'm gonna drop that gimbal down just a little bit. And we are in normal mode, so about nine meters per second, which is pretty darn quick. We're about nine meters off the ground. So I'm gonna throw it into uh, sport mode here, and let's see if we can come right back over the top of us. So full stick forward. 
Pick that gimbal up just a tad. And boy, that drone is moving. And boy, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm watching it come right over the top of us and it is hauling the mail and it is tilted forward. Wow. Yeah, so I saw a little bit of gimbal movement there. We were in sport mode, so that's perfectly understandable. Uh, let's turn around and that does, uh, that definitely, uh, that definitely, uh, uh, that was definitely some high speed there. So let's go, let's do the same thing the other direction. So I'm full stick forward. I'm adjusting the yaw just a little bit and it is tilted forward. It is so fun watching that drone haul the mail like that. Holy cow. Okay, and I let off and uh, wow, the gimbal looked good that time. So uh, let's go ahead and go back into normal mode and let's bring it back to us and let's uh, see if we can do, yeah, we already burned up a fair amount of battery there. So let's see if we can uh, do some of those intelligent flight modes. That was just fun to do. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I had fun doing it. Uh, it's just fun to uh, test the performance of these uh, of these drones. So let's bring it on in and look, it's pretty fast even in normal mode. We're over nine meters per second. Okay, let's stop right there. You know, those birds may not like that. So I'm, discretion is the better part of valor. I'm gonna bring it on the other side of us. There's some ravens that are right there flying around. And, uh, you know, I just don't want to tempt them with a, uh, with a target just sitting right there. Okay, I'm going to back it up just a little. And you can see where I'm at down here. Let's drop that gimbal down. Okay, so let's go into that. Let's click on the X at the uh, top right. Uh, you know, that looks like a little drone, I guess. And uh, we're going to go into uh, 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 creative video. And you got to stop recording. So we're going to do that. Stop recording. And we're going to go into creative video. And I forgot, it will do individual recordings. So uh, let's just go right down the line. We'll start with a, uh, a fly to sky. And let's uh, draw a square around me, maybe. And let's, uh, it says 55 meters in altitude, that's plenty. You know, I don't know what happened there, folks. Yes, so we're gonna click stop. And we're going to create a video again. Fly to sky. And I mean, the screen went dim when I did that, so we're gonna click go. There we go. What's funny is that, uh, I don't know if this shoots in 1080p or what, but, but uh, my FPV screen got kind of grainy. So it's working perfectly. It just confused me a little bit on my FPV screen there, and the, and the screen went quite dark, so uh, just while it was starting or you know was in those that adjustment uh, area of the uh, creative video so well I probably didn't need to set it 55 meters that's quite a ways but uh, it does give us a good dramatic look look at the side of that canyon there and you can see how close I am to the edge that's pretty freaking cool so by uh, my estimate yeah it finished at about 60 meters there so that's about right so now it's going to return to its starting point and we'll try out another one. Okay, so, so that ended. So we're going to go back into, uh, and, and, and then I got my, uh, you know, my screen back too. It's kind of interesting. So it, evidently it goes into a lower resolution. We'll have to look into that and see if there's a way to increase that uh, resolution. So 360, I think that is just going to do a 360 yaw around. Uh, yeah, let's, let's go ahead and do a 360 click go. 
And let me pick up the camera. That's me picking up the camera as it's doing its 360. Kind of give you a little better look. So essentially, uh, yeah, that 360, it's, it's just essentially an automated yaw. So we're going to stop that right there. And I'm going to spin the drone back around where it's looking at me again. We just did about essentially a 180 there. Uh, and let me drop that gimbal back down. And let's go back in there again. Whoops, sorry about that. Creative video. And what is the next one? The next one I think is uh, Comet. So yeah, we should have, I'm going to, I'm going to get out of that. I'm going to raise an altitude just to be on the safe side. Make sure I got enough altitude here and I'm going to back it up a little bit. I'll, I'll be honest with you, this one probably looks better at a lower altitude, but we've got some, uh, some terrain here, so I just am being ultra careful. Uh, and uh, we're going to go back into creative video, comet, draw that picture around myself. And it's already on counterclockwise, so we're okay with that. Let's click go. And it'll start recording. And basically, it should uh, basically kind of do a peanut around us and, and lower an altitude and then raise an altitude again. So we'll see what it does here. It, it is keeping the camera right on us, so that's good. And yeah, I see it moving around the other day. So it actually never went behind us and it kind of lost us there on the side of the screen. We'll see if it finds us back again. And it is still, uh, it's still performing its uh, function there. Yeah, so it lost us. So I, that really wasn't fair. I think I was a little bit too high up and I was too small for it to see. I'm gonna bring it down and closer and we're gonna try that again. I think we'll be okay. 12 meters high, pick up that gimbal just a little bit and get us centered. And uh, let's try that one more time. So we're gonna go creative video, comet, and I'm gonna draw that picture around me again and we're gonna go clockwise this time and click go. And it should go the other way and let's see how it does this time. This one I think might be a little bit better because we're not so far away. And it is, uh, it does seem to be keeping us uh, well in frame here. So it seems to be tracking us well. And look at that CPU temperature is good, uh, 52 degrees. So basically it does an oblong around you. I thought it changed in altitude, uh, and I guess it does a little bit, but not terribly dramatically. I mean, it raised as it came towards us, and now it's lowering back to where it started. But you can see that worked a little bit better. It kept us, uh, kept us right in frame there, and I, that's because we were closer. Okay, so we got one more to go, and uh, create a video, and that is droney. So uh, this, uh, you guys will have seen this before. I'm gonna move the drone around to a different spot here so we get a little bit more dr dramatic uh, result. And I'm gonna bring it down and we're gonna draw that picture and it got it. And let's see, we're at 30 meters. Let's crank it up a little. Let's go out there a ways. Let's go out about 50 meters and go. And this is an automated droney, so when will that come in handy? Say you got your family with you and you want to get a nice droney shot of a bunch of you, but you don't want to be standing there with the controller in your hand. You can start this automated uh, droney and you can set your controller down. And look, I mean, it's keeping us right in the center of frame. That's perfect. Doing a great job. And it's, uh, it's returning here now. So... Uh, yeah, that's perfect. That's exactly what you want to do. Okie dokie. So it finished. I am going to, uh, and I'm going to start recording again. 
and I'm going to pack up and we're going to see if it can track us on our walk uh, back to the uh, back to the car so let's see I'm going to want to tell it to use let's go in here and we want to tell it to use uh, the controller for return to home return to home setting any wind mode I wonder if that's in under controls yeah so I'm gonna have to look into this and see how you can change that uh, return to home because what I want it to do is return to home to the uh, to the controller not its takeoff point and I don't see that on here right away so I'm gonna have to do some uh, investigation into that uh, so in the meantime let me get packed up and uh, and and we'll uh, see if we can do some tracking just leaving the drone uh, hovering up there while I get everything packed up including the landing pad now it does bother me a little bit that I can't change that uh, return to home uh, location and there's there's got to be a way I just don't remember what it is and I didn't want to waste a bunch of battery time digging through the menus so okay let's uh, click in there and we're gonna go in following mode and we're gonna go active track we still got 51 percent battery so see if it's got me and it does click go we're gonna start recording and uh, yeah let's see if it'll track us all the way back to the car and if I have to I can land it between here and there but looks like we're good on battery what I don't want it to do is do a return to home <laughs> so we could always cancel that if we had to uh, again I'm just walking but uh, but it seems to be tracking me perfectly let's see if we can uh, move it to the side uh, USB disconnected so that's the first time we've had that well that's not good I'm gonna disconnect and reconnect yeah cuz the drone yeah the drone went into return to home and I got no control over it let's see if we can get that back yeah so I'm walking back aircraft disconnected it says so I'm gonna unplug replug again still aircraft disconnected the drone is coming down I have no control of the drone folks okay that wasn't good <laughs> so basically as it was coming down because I didn't want it to land in the brush there I stuck my hand under it so uh, yeah that's an issue uh, now is that that uh, that uh, cable I, I don't know but full disconnect and I couldn't get it back now and, and I had no control with the controller either so that's a problem uh, let me get everything shut down here and we'll do a quick conclusion you know what before we do that I'm gonna try and cycle the controller and see if we get it back let's try that Then I'm gonna turn the controller back on so that was odd I mean as I was walking back I just got that disconnected uh, warning and the drone just stopped and hovered but what I knew it would do is what it was supposed to do and go back into 
uh, return to home. So, ready to fly. So, when, as soon as I cycled the controller, we got it back. So, uh, you know, maybe had I done that, I would have got control back. But that's not something you should ever have to do. Uh, okay, let me shut all this stuff down and, uh, and we'll do a conclusion. Hey everybody, I'm doing the conclusion here in my office because uh, I had an issue with the GoPro out in the field as in a dead battery, uh, so I couldn't do the conclusion out there. But a couple of weird things happened. Now, the flight went really good uh, with the Xeno Mini Pro. We, we went through all the creative video modes and I thought that went well. And by the way, I've looked at those files and it is in 4K. It does record in 4K. When I was looking on the screen, it was definitely that my FPV went to low res, and I don't know what that's about, something in the app or whatever. Uh, but in any case, what was concerning about this particular flight is uh, what I wanted to do, what I was trying to do, was pick up all my gear and have the drone track us all the way back to the car. Uh, but as I walked back, uh, and as you saw, I got back there a little ways, and for whatever reason, uh, we lost connection, and I wasn't able to get reconnected. Now, I, I, I unplugged the OTG cable, plugged it back in, uh, actually on the phone end, and I tried it actually on the uh, controller end as well. Uh, and we were able to connect to the app, but we were still disconnected from the drone. Now, once we landed, I cycled the controller, and we got connection back so I think had I cycled the controller I would have got connection back but as it was I did not get connection I had no control over the drone it did what it's supposed to do and went into return to home and of course that return to home mark is where I took off not where I you know where I want where I was at uh, so I went back there and the drone was landing it would have landed in a patch of gravel I think it would have been fine but, but I just held my hand out flat and, uh, and let the drone uh, land in my hand. And by the way, once it was in landing mode, those downward facing sensors, it, it just went ahead and landed uh, right in my hand. So like I said, I just held my hand perfectly flat and, uh, and was able to catch the drone. Uh, but that is a concern. Why did we get that disconnection? Was it the OTG cable or what? I honestly, I, I don't know. Uh, I just don't know. The, I, I'm kind of doubting it was the cable because if it was the cable, I still would have had uh, control of the drone with the sticks, and I did not. Uh, so, yeah, odd deal. That was the only weird thing about it. Other than that, you know, as you saw, the drone performed uh, just fine. So, uh, in any case, that's about it. Uh, this is Marcus Crawford with the Idaho Quadcopter Channel out. And if you like this kind of content, uh, please consider subscribing to my channel. And most of all, I really do appreciate you taking the time to look at this video. And, and of course, we'll see you on the next one. Uh, the uh, Hubson Zeno Mini Pro. Talk to you later. Bye.